Hello, Bill. Another beautiful day. Yep. Hope your five senses work. Health and strength is good. Or excellent. What? What's up, Steam Deck fans? Steam Deck Tribe, Steam Deck Nation, Steam Deck Universe, Steam Deck World, Steam Deck Legion, what's good? Steam Deck Mod, what's happening? Steam Deck Squad, what's up? And you Steam Deck nerds, geeks, and freaks, and you investigators. All right, what's happening? So, we can connect a USB uh, Blu-ray DVD player to the Steam Deck? Yep. Anything a desktop can do, the Steam Deck can do it. Anything a laptop can do, the Steam Deck can do it. Yeah. So we can play DVDs and, um, and Blu-rays on the Steam Deck. Right? Yeah. And if you know Linux, there are some... Um, there's a DVD player app for the for the Linux operating system and a Blu-ray player app. I mean, um, a command that you will enter in the terminal and you can play DVDs and Blu-rays on any Linux operating system. So, anything a desktop can do, Steam Deck can do it. Anything a laptop can do, Steam Deck can do it. Remember, this is a this is a, this this is a PC in handheld form. Oh yeah, and with this fella. <laughs> sitting messing around here. Anyway, so yeah, I was sitting there looking at this little article. But what I really want to talk about here is this Starfield got a controversy, a modding controversy. Seems like someone want to control how you speak. Hmm. Sounds kind of kind of racist if you get the point. Listen to this: <laughs> Starfield pronoun removal mod sparks controversy after banned by Nexus mod. <laughs> Says here, Starfield has made headlines for various reasons across the gaming industry. Not only is its Bethesda biggest launch with over six six million players in less than ten days, but the game has also become Microsoft biggest Microsoft most successful current generation release. However, a selected group of Bethesda fans recently took to social media expressing the outrage over this over the studio's inclusion of the pronouns in the game. Players can pick between options like he, him, he he slash him, she slash her, and they them. But some have not been fond of this decision. <laughs> It says the spark, the spark a mod that removed these pronouns from the game, but Nexus Mods has has banned the pronoun removal mod in Starfield. Hmm. It says why it matters. Modding is all about freedom, and many felt that Nexus Mod decision to remove the part particular mod went against the notion. However, <laughs> sitting messing around here. However, <laughs> where am I at? However, Nexus Mod believes <laughs> believes such mods do not belong on the platform. Uh, you're being um, what's that word I'm looking for? Ra you're you're being racist. Come on, man, stop it. Says your uh, says your Starfield, like many modern RPGs, offer the abilities to select character pronouns independently from physical attributes. Additionally, it provides the option to choose they them pronouns. Allowing players to experience the game as a non-binary character while traveling the massive galaxy of over 1,000 planets. It says this inclusion led to a clash between, between people with different opinions on the subjects of gender and pronouns, leading to mods that would remove the option entirely for some players. However, Nexus Mod was quickly to ban the mod and claim Hosting this mod was not for us, and it and it is in with, and it is within our rights not to host content on our platform. That man has a problem. It says here, moreover, Nexus Mod asserts that the removal was not a political statement. When you're limiting people's speech. That is a political statement. Anyway, it says here, as it was not aligned with a particular side of the culture wars. Hmm. It says here, uh, the platform hopes to achieve diverse diversity <laughs> and inclusion within its community, and does not mind losing a few people in its quest for a healthy community. 
you are you already see what the problem is already. It says here, it says here following following the ban, Nexus Mod has received death threats and hateful comments from some people. And it says here, apart from this controversial mod, Starfield modders have already added quite a few quality of life updates to the game. While Bethesda is working on, on official DLSS support for the game, modders have been one step ahead, adding the particular upscaler to Starfield at, at release. Other requests, including like a FOB slider, FOV slider, also have also been modded into the RPG. And then it says, and that is that. Well, it amazes me. Oh boy. Well, be careful what you wish for, you know. You just might get it. <laughs> you know, talking. It. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny how you, how you would use the word diversity. <laughs> this is, it's, it's, kind of, it's, it's really funny to me. All right, what else we got? Uh, let's see here. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Let's see, Sea of Thieves. Um, okay. Sea of Thieves. Mm, what do we got? It's a new expansion too, and this and this has a video. I will leave the link in the description box. It says here, uh, Sea of Thieves re reveals future plans for players, guilds, and pirate games ascension. Uh, no, Sea of Thieves reveal future plans for players and and private sessions in season ten. Hmm. It says in July, developer Rare announced that it is upcoming. In July, developer Rare announced that its upcoming <laughs> content updates for Season 10 of its pirate-themed game, Sea of Thieves, will be delayed until October 19th. Delayed until October 19th. This week, the developer announced some of the new features that will be added as a part of Season 10, including a new way to play the game. It says here, in a blog post, Rare stated that when Season 10 begins, See if these players will be uh, able to form their own in-game guilds, Rare stated. And it says, let me get this advertisement out of the way here. It says here, uh, Offering a new way of playing together with your friends, players created guilds will allow up to 24 pirates to unify under a single banner. Guild members can sail on their friend's pledge uh, ship even when they're offline and work towards increasing the shared guild reputation to unlock a wealth of new rewards. Later in Season 10, Rear will launch a new in-game competitive hunt called Skull Siren Song. All players on one server will be able to get the notification for when the hunt begins at, at, the, at the same time so they can all try to be the first to get the magical artifact. Finally, as a part of the plan for Season 10, Sea of Thieves will gain a new mode called Safer Seas. This will, this will allow one player to check out the game on their own or with a trusted group of friends on their own private server so they don't have to deal with other online players. While this mode won't have all the content of the full game, including its multiplayer features, it will, it will be a way for players to enjoy some content by themselves. It will also likely be a good way for new players to get used to the game mechanics. And it says here, before Season 10 begins, Sea of Thief players, Thieves players will be able to check out the third and final episode in the Sea of Thieves uh, Le Legends of Monkey Island crossover. On September 28th. Yeah, so get ready for that, folks. See, see if thieves. Yep. Play on your own server by yourself. It's kind of like um, buying the physical game from the <laughs> from the store. You know, you know, um, you know, uh, like buying the, buying the physical game on a disc and then play it, play it. But now they want you to. Uh, Play the game. You can play the game on your own server. For those people who know how to build game servers, anyway. And this this has a YouTube video, so I will leave the link in the description 
box. All right, what else we got for you little Steam Deck fans? Something here about uh, the Division. Let's see here, uh, let's see here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? The Division. Yeah. The Division Three. Oh yeah, it's an early development. The Division Three. It says the Division Three confirmed to be an early development. The Division has become a flagship Ubisoft since its debut in 2016. Since the first game, Ubisoft released a sequel. And another spin-off, The Division Heartland, is scheduled to launch in 2023. While there's no information about the third mainline title, Ubisoft has just confirmed the existence of a new game for the series. The Division 3 begun development by a new team at the studio. Why it matters, The Division 2 sold over 10 million copies. And the entire franchise has accumulated over 40 million players to date, making it a massive IP. Says the announcement was made alongside the recent appointment of Julian as the executive director for the D Division IP. The developer has worked on both previous games and the franchise has now been appointed to work on the third game. Confirming its plans, U UB wrote a focus of... Uh, Gritly, Gritty is to build a team for Tom Clancy Division 3. Julian uh, Grith, Grith, Grithy also shared his excitement to be working on the franchise. The developer believes the IP is still in its infancy and the pre presents several opportunities to explore new ideas. S yeah, since the developer is currently busy with Star Wars Outlaws, Division 3 will not receive much focus anytime soon. <coughs> says here, however, Julian hopes to ensure that his next project main, maintains the high bar of quality the franchise is known for. And, yeah, in addition to the new Star Wars game and the upcoming entry in the Division IP, Massive Entertainment has been working on Avatar Frontier of Pandora in 2023. The studio latest release is coming on December 7th bringing the freedom of an open world to popular universe of the Avatar franchise. Oh yeah, you guys you guys are getting some games, man. It says here, uh, following the announcement, Massive Entertainment has a lot of projects on its plate, therefore the Division 3 is unlikely to see the light of day in the next few years. Meanwhile, fans can look forward to another year of support for the Division. Yeah, so, there. You guys are covered. Yep. Let's see anything else? Let's see, uh, we got. Let's see, we got. <clears throat> we got Starfield, Sea of Thieves, and the Division. And yes, you can use a um, <laughs> a um, a uh, a a a USB DVD player on your Steam Deck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm. Oops. Well, I got time. Okay. Got plenty of time. Let's see what else here. Uh, says here, uh, oops, the Steam Deck is my only DVD player. <laughs> says I mess up at multiple times in my life if I'm relying on a Steam Deck to help me play DVDs, but that's where I am at. Having gotten rid of particularly every device I own over the past few years that could play disc, the Steam Deck cannot, cannot play DVDs by itself. So to revi revi revisit our collection of discs, I had the idea, one that I'm far from the first to try, to connect a no-frill USB power DVD drive to the Deck TV dock and then run the disc with VLC Media Player app. I am equally part I am equally part proud of and embarrassed by this hacky setup. You don't need to feel bad for me. This method as you might have assumed, is about as far from an elegant user experience as it gets, especially if you're trying to implant it in an entertainment center. Actually, using it without tearing your hair out involves either using a mouse, connect to your Steam Deck, or a painstakingly remacking v VLC mouse and keyboard command to a controller. Honestly, neither choice nets something that feels good to use. And shows the picture here. So, on the software side, getting things set up is simpler. Thankfully, VLC Media Player app is supported by SteamOS versions of Linux. 
you can find it in the Discovery Store that's accessible in the Steam Deck desktop mode. The Steam Deck, it's a computer. After installing it, right click the app and selecting the idea, add to Steam option and it. Then it says in parentheses and really any other app. The collection of titles show up in the deck more TV friendly gaming mode. So basically, what you're doing is this you have the Steam Deck, you have the dock, you take the USB uh, uh, DVD player or even Blu ray, and then um, connect it to the dock, docking station, and then install the VLC uh, media player app, and that should get you, go that should get you going. Uh, uh, playing uh, DVDs from the Steam Deck, but the Steam Deck is just a handheld PC, a, hand, a, a PC in handheld form. That's all it is. So anything a desktop can do, the Steam Deck can do it. Anything a laptop can do, the Steam Deck can do it. So yeah, um, you can just take a USB um, uh, uh, DVD player and um, yeah, connect it to the Steam Deck and. Uh, Play your uh, play play uh, play your movies, okay? And it, and it will take up your take up your TV screen, because so you got the dock. It connects the to the deck, and then the USB D DVD player connects in the USB port. A USB port holds uh 127 devices on a PC. USB USB stands for U Universal Serial Bus. So a USB player. Um, a uh, DVD player is just connecting, connecting the back of one of those USB ports on the docking station, and then with the VLC player app, uh, app, yeah, you can play DVD movies on your Steam Deck. There, <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 all it takes, and that's it. <laughs> what it says here, uh, say, uh, <clears throat> says yeah, launching it will take you directly to VLC interface. Taking up the full size of my TV with this insulation, Windows 98 uh, Q design from there. It's pretty breezy. Use the software above. It's not how it works. Shouldn't take much effort if you're tinkered with the Steam Deck desktop mode. And it says here, is this my long-term solution for watching DVDs? I hope not, but it might be so, so long as it keeps working. That said, I have had my voice in my head that's making me little consider various dedicated 4K Blu-ray player option. I am also hoping that Sony actually follows through with the rumor that it will someday sell PS5 disk drives separately. I suspect that it will be a costlier solution and it may, it may look just as hacky as the Steam Deck solution, but at least it did, it did, did be a little more future-proof like with a support of for a 4K Blu-ray disk drive. I envy you if you can't currently relate to my debacle of running out of disk friendly gadgets. But situations like mine are only going to be more common. Using Microsoft recent use X Xbox leaks as an indication that more companies are heading an all digital future, the ability to play disk of any kind in your next console may not be a given. In the case of the video disc of any effort, you'll have to put it in more effort and maybe more money to enjoy your collection down the road. But as most physical media enthusiasts will admit, putting in that effort is a part of the fun. Yeah, and that's the end of the article. So basically, you're taking you're taking the Steam Deck with a dock, you take a USB uh, Blu-ray uh, DVD or Blu-ray player, and then. Uh, uh, you don't you, you you get the VLC uh, uh, media player and that should let you uh, uh, play uh, DVD movies on the Steam Deck. Now if you if you if if you're a if you're if you've been using Linux, any Linux operating system, you know once you go, if you go in the terminal and then you type in that command uh, that lets you play DVDs or type in that command that lets you play Blu-ray movies on any Linux operating system. So. If a desktop can do it and a laptop can do it, so can the Steam Deck. <laughs> so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. So yeah, you guys can watch DVD movies on your Steam Deck. And the Steam Deck is a PC in handheld form. 
Yeah, you can run Windows 10 and Windows 11 on the Steam Deck. You can install it. You can install it on a uh, SD card, or you can install it on the uh, on the solid state drive. Uh, the solid state drive within the uh, within the Steam Deck. The one that that whatever is 500, one terabyte, two, you know. But yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Steam Deck is good, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a PC, and it can do a lot. So enjoy, folks. Enjoy. Yeah. But other than that, the Starfield controversy, Nexus mod controversy. <laughs> yeah. It amazes me that he run to those words, uh, our communities, our communities and diversity. <laughs> like he want to be, he want to control their, their speech and all this. Well, you reap what you sow. Then you have the, um, the, what's that? Let's see, the division. The and then you have, what does that talk about? Ah, uh, Sea of Thieves. I will leave that link in the description box. So, other than that. I'm going to leave this video. hope you enjoy it. Leave all the articles plus the link. Hope you enjoy the video. Nice talking to you people again. Chris, still Star Wars, Star Trek thing. Or Dark Side. Go. Peace.